For a generation of football fans in the 1990s, Channel 4's coverage of Italian football was their ticket to an exotic and stylish form of the game so different from unsophisticated English football. With their Saturday morning highlights program Gazzetta Football Italia and live coverage of Serie A matches on a Sunday, Channel 4 would regularly pull in 3 million viewers at its peak. Their decision to broadcast Italian matches was inspired by Paul Gascoigne's transfer from Tottenham to Lazio in 1992, plus an enduring English interest in all things Italian from the 1990 World Cup. With the advent of Sky Television, who took the live broadcast rights to the Premier League in 1992, football fans were starved of terrestrial football coverage and Football Italia helped fill the void. While Gaza was undoubtedly the star attraction, and was an early presenter of Channel 4's highlights before James Richardson took over, other English players played in the country throughout the 1990s. We take a look at how they got on. Paul Gascoigne Lazio 1992-95 Gascoigne was the main catalyst for English interest in the Italian game. Just two years after his tears on the pitch during England's World Cup semi-final defeat to West Germany, Lazio paid £5.5 million to bring Geza in from Spurs. An extrovert personality off the field and genius on it. Gascoigne was very much a one-off character and his transfer meant that suddenly millions of English fans were following Lazio's results very closely. Indeed, Channel 4's decision to bid for Italian football coverage came after Gascoigne, working with TV production company Chrysalis on a documentary, remarked it would be a shame viewers back home couldn't watch him in Serie A. Channel 4's plan was for Gascoigne to present the Saturday highlights program, Gazetta is a play on his nickname, but when he failed to turn up for filming, he was replaced by Richardson, a producer who'd never previously worked in front of the camera. Nonetheless, many Gazetta features involved Gascoigne, typically walking around an Italian city with hilarious results. On the field, his three seasons with Lazio were dogged by injury setbacks and inconsistent form, he played only 47 matches and scored just six goals. Gazza struggled to settle in Italy, feeling alone and isolated, and failed to master the language to help his integration. He famously greeted the Lazio president Sergio Cragnotti by saying your daughter has big tits. He endured a rocky relationship with the Italian press, who sought to unsettle him, though he didn't help himself by belching down a reporter's microphone on live television. In the 1993 preseason he was so out of shape, Lazio manager Dino Zoff demanded he shed two stone or lose his place in the team. But there were occasional moments of glory. He became a legend to Lazio fans when he scored an 89th-minute equaliser, his first goal for the club, in the derby with Roma in 1992, joyously running to the fans with arms outstretched. David Platbari, Juventus, Sampdoria 1991-95 The antithesis in so many ways to Gascoigne, Platt wholeheartedly embraced the experience of living and playing in Italy and emerged from his four seasons in Serie A with credit. The midfielder's career took on a higher trajectory after his volley for England against Belgium in the last 16 of the 1990 World Cup, a goal set up, ironically, by Gascoigne's free kick. If I hadn't scored that goal, I might still have ended up playing in Italy but, realistically, I'm sure it was the catalyst, Platt later recalled. Italian clubs were wary of signing English players but Bari, just promoted back into the top flight and with an ambitious president and Vincenzo Mataris were willing to pay Aston Villa £5.5 million for him. Platt's willingness to learn the language and ingratiate himself in Italian culture impressed, as did his dedication on the training ground. I wanted to become an Italian, speak like an Italian, to live and eat like an Italian, Platt said. He was fluent in the language within a few months. Mobbed by delighted fans at the airport. Platt didn't exactly lessen the burden on his shoulders by saying he wanted to become the Maradona of Bari. That may explain why he was handed the number 10 shirt. Sadly, Bari suffered relegation but Platt still managed to score 11 league goals. Bari only scored 26 all season, and attract interest from some of Italy's more prestigious clubs. In the summer of 1992, Platt chose the lore of Juventus over Sampdoria. The Turin club signed him as part of a spending spree that also included Dino Baggio, Gianluca Vili, Andreas Moller and Fabrizio Robinelli. Though Juventus won the UEFA Cup, Platt didn't play as regularly as he'd hoped for and, on the suggestion of their skipper Roberto Mancini, he ended up signing for Sampdoria in a £5.2 million deal. With future England manager Sven Joran Eriksson at the helm, Platt excelled and helped them finish third in the league and win the 1994 Coppa Italia. By 1995, Platt was offered a move to Arsenal, the side who had knocked Sampdoria out of the Cup Winners' Cup semi-finals, and he took his chance. 
Italy was genuinely sad to see him go. Paul Ince Inter Milan 1995-97 Ince was playing golf with Ryan Giggs when Alex Ferguson called to inform him Manchester United had accepted an offer from Inter Milan in the summer of 1995. After being wowed by the suave and ambitious Inter president Massimo Moratti, the governor was on his way to the San Siro in a £7.5 million deal. Taking a house by the spectacular Lake Como and immersing himself in Italian language and culture. Ince proved a rare positive in a disappointing 1995-96 season that saw Inter finish a disappointing seventh. Although he played alongside the likes of Roberto Carlos, Javier Zanetti, Yuri Drukaev, and Ivan Zamorano, Inter were miles behind their neighbors Milan, who won the Scudetto. Ince's warrior-like spirit, good engine and eye for a defense-splitting pass earned him adulation and the hard-to-please Inter ultras used to sing come on Paul Ince, come on. Ince was initially irked that manager Ottavio Bianchi played him on the left wing of a 3-5-2 formation rather than his familiar central midfield role. But once Roy Hodgson came in, all changed for the better. Inter finished third in 1996-97 and reached the final of the UEFA Cup, where they lost out on penalties to Schalke. That summer, Ince decided to return to England and sign for Liverpool, leaving many Inter fans to wonder what might have been. Day Walker Sampdoria 1992-93 If playing in Italy was a tough proposition for an English player anyway, try playing there as an English defender. The Italians have turned defending into an art form over the years and Walker, despite being one of England's best at the back, struggled during his sole season in Serie A with Sampdoria. Walker arrived in Italy at the same time as Gascoigne, joining a Sampdoria side that the previous season had lost 1-0 to Barcelona in the European Cup final from Nottingham Forest in a £1.5 million deal. The first game Channel 4 broadcast live was a meeting between Walker's Sampdoria and Gascoigne's Lazio, though Gaza was out injured, that finished 3-3. Walker was blamed for two of the goals and struggled to rebuild his confidence. To make matters worse, Eriksson played Walker out of position at left-back throughout the season a responsibility he simply wasn't used to. Returning to England with Sheffield Wednesday after just one season, Walker's Italian job was a short and unsuccessful one. Lee Sharp Sampdoria 1998-99 Fast forward to the end of the decade and Platt is coach of Sampdoria. Lee Sharp, once a flying winger, is suffering a torrid time at Leeds United as injuries take their toll. For a change of scenery, David O'Leary decides to loan him out to struggling Samp for a change of scenery in the hope of some snatched game time in Serie A. Soon after his arrival, Platt departs following complaints that he doesn't have the necessary coaching qualifications, and is replaced by Luciano Spalletti. Sharp, friendless and unable to speak the language, plays only three league games, but some things were eventful. My roommate, a first-teamer, was bang at it. Sharp later recalled to The Guardian. He said, we are going down the coast to a rave. Dance all night, take a couple of tablets. I never really fancied it. Danny Dikeo Sampdoria 1997-98, Lecce, Lone, 1997 Sticking with Sampdoria and their apparent love affair with English players, Dikeo's unexpected move to Italy came about after Ericsson watched him score an outrageous long-range volley for QPR at Wolves. Unfortunately, that goal was very much the exception to the rule with the striker and by the time he arrived at the club. Ericsson had been replaced in the hot seat by the Argentine Caesar Luis Minotti. Avowed Marxist Minotti allegedly spent his first four hours with Dikio explaining to the Englishman why the Falkland Islands should be described as the Malvinas and it went downhill from there. Although Dikio's Sampdoria record will forever stand at a goal a game, he spent most of his Italian sojourn on loan at Lecce, where he at least played more often. He quickly returned to England with Sunderland, forever a footnote in a Sampdoria team that contained the likes of Roberto Mancini. Juan Sebastian Varin, and Vincenzo Montella. Franz Car Reggiana 1996-97 If English players who played in Serie was a category on BBC quiz show Pointless, then Carr would send the bar crashing right down to zero. The fleet-footed winger, who could cover 100 metres in 11 seconds, was signed by relegation favourites Reggiana from Aston Villa, where he'd barely played. Carr thought his move to Italy was the beginning of something special. I did not have enough space to show what I'm worth. For sure in Italy you do not know who Carr is but in England I do not want to go back, Carr said on arrival. Alas, it wasn't to be. Despite two assists that helped Reggiana to a rare victory against Perugia, Carr's time in Italy was one of unrewarded effort. After just six matches, he was loaned to Bolton and eventually finished his career with West Brom and the Pittsburgh Riverhounds in the United States. Tony Dorigo Torino 1997-98 Australian-born England international Dorigo almost joined Sampdoria at the same time as Platt in the early 1990s but came to Leeds United instead. However, 
he would get his crack at Calcio towards the end of his career by spending a season in Serie B with Torino. The aim was to get Torino promoted to the top division and they reached the promotion final against Perugia, only for Dorigo to miss a crucial penalty in the shootout. Unfortunately I went straight to Sardinia on holiday and when I checked in and said Dorigo the response I got was, I thought it was you, you missed the penalty, he later recalled. Dorigo was about to return for a second season with Torino when financial constraints led to the end of his contract. He ended up at Derby County instead. He has since worked as a pundit on BT Sports live coverage of Italian football.